going to be talking a little bit about troubleshooting and repairing uh, an injector problem on an N14 Cummins Select Plus today. Um, first of all, let's talk a little bit about diagnosing the problem. Uh, the problem that presented itself was just a dead mess in the engine, and I was getting, uh, of course, white smoke out of the exhaust. Uh, the first thing I did was smell, try to smell the exhaust to see what it smelled like. Uh, it smelled like unburnt fuel rather than oil, so that gave me a clue that it was an injector problem. And of course the engine had a dead mess in it, which also was another clue. Um, I looked at the blow-by for excessive blow-by, that didn't appear to be the case. I opened the oil fill tube and didn't get any excessive blow-by there either, which indicated that 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 was probably, I probably did not have a problem with a valve or a piston or a ring. Uh, it was more than likely uh, an injector problem. And so I just narrowed it down. And uh, that's what you have to do when diagnosing these problems. If you don't have the specialized computer equipment uh, that they do, like for instance, at any major shop or, or, or like that. But, yeah, uh, we'll come and have a look at some of the some of the other procedures that I went through in diagnosing this this issue. Uh, first of all, if you don't already own a copy of the Cummins Shop Repair Manual, uh, I highly recommend it. I wouldn't I wouldn't attempt a repair on an engine without a technical reference manual. Um, if you don't have these, any repairs that you do, you do completely blind. So, from my years of experience, I highly recommend that if you don't already own a shop manual, make that your first purchase before you try and attempt any major repair on any engine, for that matter. As I mentioned before, I didn't have the specialized diagnostic equipment, and uh, before I did anything else, before I tore into the engine, I wanted to el eliminate the possibility of an electrical problem or an electrical short. Uh, before I had to take the engine apart to make sure that it wasn't in the injector harness anywhere. And the way that I tested that on this particular engine was just simply by unplugging the injectors. And you do that here on the intake side of the engine. This is the injector here. and It takes a little bit to unplug them, but they're not real difficult. You just unplug it and uh, I unplugged every injector and uh, of course when you unplug them the engine will either run rougher or not and uh, of course because you'll either have one cylinder misfiring or two cylinders misfiring but in order to eliminate the possibility that it was an electrical short what I did was I took the injector line and I plug this little diode into it here and uh, just plug it in there like so and it flashed and it flashed on all six cylinders so I, lim I eliminated the possibility of a short in the injector harness by doing that and so now we're faced with the mechanical problem so uh, that was part of the uh, part of my diagnostic procedure. Uh, as I mentioned before, you want to el eliminate the easiest possibilities first. And uh, so, when we were unplugging the injectors, we found that on every cylinder except cylinder number five, um, there was a definite and distinct change in the way the engine ran. Uh, as I mentioned before, we, we had two cylinders not firing rather than just the one. But when we unplugged the injector wire on cylinder five, there was no difference in the way the engine ran. So that, that was a clue that told us that that was probably the problem. Um, so we looked a little bit farther and on the exhaust side of the engine, if you look at cylinder 5 there, 
you can see that it's wet around the exhaust manifold gasket and there was a definite puff of, of smoke when that cylinder tried to fire because it wasn't in fact firing. So that was a pretty good indication that that was the, the, the cylinder that was the injector that was giving us a problem. So, as you can see here, I had to remove the valve cover, I had to remove the exhaust brake in order to get down to the, in to the injector, which sits here. Uh, it needs to be all cleaned out and everything again, I can see. I did that all as per the procedure in the, in the manual. I had to remove the rocker arms on the cylinder. I had to remove the pad that the rocker arms ride on, the injector. On the Cummins Select Plus, the shop manual um, recommends that you use a specific injector removal tool. They give you an alternate way of removing the injector with a pry bar. Uh, I actually called Cummins and they didn't have that tool available. I probably wouldn't have bought it anyway, but I asked them. Um, but I had a small pry bar that I paid, um, I think it was three dollars is what I paid for the small pry bar. Uh, as you can see, I had to modify it a little bit to get down inside the, the head assembly in order to remove the injector. That didn't work real well, so I went ahead with the modification and, and, I, and I bent the tool at the tip. I didn't use a torch, I didn't heat it, I just put it in a vise and bend it at a 90 degree angle and uh, worked worked at it until I got uh, a pin. As you can see, their, spe their special tool is pinned into the injector and then you pull the injector out after you remove the injector hold down clamp. And so I made this tool specifically to remove this injector. Like I said, the tool cost me three dollars so it wasn't a real big deal to, to modify it. But as you can see, this is the pinhole that their special tool fits in. And I've got my tool modified where it fits in that pinhole as well. And you just pull the injector out once you remove the injector hold down clamp. And so uh, my little modification to my tool here worked rather well. Uh, it'll come in handy when I do the rest of the injectors. Right now, I'm only concerned about replacing this one injector that's gone bad. Um, that's a $450 part. Take a lot of care when you remove these injectors. Don't damage any part of it, especially the solenoid. These are plastic, and don't damage them or they might not give you a core allowance on it and the core allowance can be as much as three hundred dollars. So, um, the places I've checked for injectors, the core allowance varies anywhere from $125 to $300. So, whatever you do, don't damage the core. Uh, well, tomorrow I'll see if they've got a new injector for me. Also, you find the injector part number on the body of the injector here, right here where you find the part number. And this particular part number is 34117667-EC. That's what I'll be looking for tomorrow. And uh, that's, that's a $450 part. So, there you have it.